Back when we formed the Trunk Fleet, we used the Abaddon as our flagship. At the time, the armor plate built on the Abaddon was very good. We used to run two adaptives and four armor plates or three adaptives and three armor plates. But since then, the armor plates have been nerfed on the last April balance patch. And of course, we have received implants. And with time, the, the Abaddon has changed. Now, the one thing that still remains the same on this ship is the tank. The Abaddon is still one of the tankiest bricks that this game has to offer. And I really, really like this ship. Now, let's first take a look at the basic info of the Abaddon. Now, the advanced large laser pressure bonus will give you plus 10% large laser damage, plus 75% large laser optimal range, and the advanced battleship combo bonus will give you plus 4% armor resistance. Now these are pretty solid, pretty solid stats. Uh, they haven't been changed so far. It's still the same as it used to be. Now the Abaddon has two drones, eight high slots, four medium slots, six low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs, 105,000 hit points defense. Now the Abaddon is uh, an armor tank. It always was an armor tank, so don't attempt to use a shield tank on the Abaddon. It would be uh, very bad and very cursed. Now the capacitor 16,000, which is really solid. 931 seconds is the recharge time, 44.8 gigajoules per second is the recharge rate per second, and targets maximum lock targets. 285.2 meters is the signature radius, 120 meters is the scan resolution, 20.1 is the center strength, 2 astronomical units per second is the warp speed, and 136 meters per second is the speed. Now the Abaddon is actually pretty fast for a, for a chunk. Uh, you will see that later on. It's actually a pretty fast battleship surprisingly fast. Now 1518.63 uh, DPS with the pulse ladders. Now they have a very nice optimal range, 45.05 kilometers, accuracy fall of uh, 6.5 kilometers, tracking speed 7.24, which honestly is uh, pretty solid for pulse ladders. However, the main thing about this ship is the tank. The Abaddon is a very, very tanky battleship. Now, in the low slots, I have one afterburner dual repairs and triple armor hardeners. In the medium slots, dual Nosferatus, one scrambler, and one. Well, basically the normal stuff that I run on this ship. Now, as for the as for the rigs, I have expanded on the on the resistance tank and I replicated the rigs that I used to have on the Hyperion. Now on the Hyperion I did a focused build between resistance and between armor repair. On this ship I did the same. I have two 4P Comet rig integrations and one 3P Comet rig integration. The 3P rig is focused on resistance while the 4P rigs are focused on resistance and armor repair. And as you can see, I have some really good stats on the on the armor. 68, 70, 76 and 75% resistance. This is cold while everything is offline. Now as for the engineering rigs, I have capacitor rigs. You can go with rig integrations on the on these rigs, but the normal rigs work uh, just as good because the Abaddon already has a pretty powerful capacitor. A pretty good capacitor. I would say the Abaddon has one of the best capacitors out of any battleship in the game. Now as for the implants, this is where things get interesting. On the Abaddon you can use three implants. If you want extra tank, then the thermal circulation implant would be the implant to go for. The level 15 Secondary will give you extra 20% armor resistance, and this is applicable basically to all armor tanks. And you will you will not be using the implant's uh, main stats, but you will equip the implant uh, for the secondary stat for the armor. You can use the focus crystal and pulse crystal. However, you will be having less resistance, but a lot more DPS. So in the end, it really depends on what you want to uh, use this ship for. In my case, because I use the Abaddon as a PvP ship primarily, I would go for extra tank, because you can't have enough tank on a tanky battleship. Especially if you... Especially if everyone wants a piece of your ship. Now let me quickly show you the active stats on the Abaddon, just to, just to show you how tanky uh, this thing can get with this current build. I will show you Undocking. multiple builds. 
and multiple combinations and variations uh, that you can use on the Abaddon that work and that are very very nice builds. Okay, so I have undocked. Let me boot up all three adaptives. Now you don't use the implant because if you use the implant, uh, the resistance will be will be gone. You have to have heat below 30 in order for the implant to actually work. So. Uh, it will give me extra 20% armor resistance on uh, on armor, basically on all uh, ships. Doesn't matter if if you don't use uh, railguns, that implant will work. And let's take a look at the build, at the active stats: 525,000 hit points. The DPS is of course the same. 86, 87, 90, and 89% resistance on 58,000 armor hit points. You know, this is surprisingly, you know, pretty tanky, uh, as expected. And the aft burner speed 530.99 meters per second. For a battleship this size, and for a battleship that's this tanky, that speed is really solid. With the micro updrive, you can get up to 1.5 kilometers per second. Micro updrive Abaddon is very fast. Now, the next build has one damage control. The damage control will, will give you extra 8.64% resistance on shield, armor and hull. And now I have 308,000 hit points, 71, 73, 78 and 77% resistance. Let's take a look at the uh, active stats. Now we will have no afterburner with this build, but you will have extra tank. So if you like to bait with the Abaddon, a build like this might be uh, very interesting. And yeah, uh, this thing is hard to kill. 574,000 hit points, 87, 88, 91, and 90% resistance on armor, which is a nice little upgrade. Now let's turn on the panic button on the damage control, and now the hit points are 1.7 million, 96, 96, 97, and 97% resistance on the armor, on 58,000 hit points. Which still is really, really solid, and yeah, you will get basically invulnerability for about 13 seconds. Can be good in some critical situations, especially uh, if you get tackled Docking on request a accepted. Okay, now this build has triple adaptives, one reactive and one damage control. Now this build will give you very good armor resistance stats, but you will have... Oh! Well, a medium armor repair. Let's not let's not fit that on your battleship. This is very cursed. Okay, now it's a large. Okay, now it's now it's much much better. Now with this build, you will have pretty good uh, armor resistance stats, but you will have a little bit less uh, armor repair, which you know might be a a nice build for one v ones, but. If you get jumped by several ships, that might be a problem. Because no matter how much tank you have, uh, if you can't repair the damage that your opponent is inflicting on your ship, then this build might not work. But in a 1v1, yeah, I can see this working. 89, 90, 91 and 91% resistance. And of course we have the panic button that will give you extra resistance and now it's 1.9 million. 96, 97, 97, and 97 percent. But again, I might be wrong, and this might actually work really well, uh, even against multiple ships. I guess it really depends on uh, what type of ships is shooting at you, but in most cases, having a dual armor repair build would work uh, a little bit better, but this build Docking also has accepted. its own use. Now, you can also use capacity batteries on the Abaddon, but with a capacity battery you will have to sacrifice an afterburner, an adaptive or perhaps even a armor repair. But the rigs and the ship bonuses should cover uh, the, the one adaptive that you might replace to get a capacity battery installed. With the capacity battery you uh, can make the capacity a little bit more stable and you have to you will have to worry a bit less uh, about running out of capacity during a fight 83 85 88 and 87 percent resistance 40 452,000 hit points 40 minutes and 47 seconds is the capacitor runtime which honestly is nice it added about four minutes four minutes and 40 seconds extra capacity runtime 
Although the armor repairers don't use a lot of capacitor to begin with, because well they are quite they're quite easy on the capacitor, although they have a quite long cycle time. So uh, that's Docking basically the difference between armor and shield tanking. Now this build has dual adaptives, one reactive and triple armor repairs. I personally really like this build, it reminds me of the old school Abaddon build that used armor plates. With this build you will have solid armor resistance and you have a really nice armor repair. But the one thing that will be uh, a little bit reduced here is the capacity runtime because of the triple repairs. 516,000 hit points, 86, 87, 88 and 88% 88 resistance which is really good. The DPS is the same, the capacitor is 5 minutes and 56 seconds. However, again, it's a armor tank, armor repairs use less capacitor, so it could even last a lot longer than that. I don't really trust that capacitor runtime number on armor tanks, because usually if you uh, know how to save the capacitor during a fight, Docking your capacitor will accepted. last a lot longer than what's stated on, uh, on the capacitor window. And here you have triple adaptives and triple armor repairs. This is a build that I see a lot more often on the Abaddons nowadays. It works really well. And if you like to have a damage control, you can replace one of these adaptives into a damage control that will give you a passive resistance boost. And you can keep the triple armor repairs. Can be useful if uh, you get jumped by a dreadnought. It can make your ship take very little to no damage from a dreadnought for about 13 seconds. And you can also uh, use a build like this with an afterburner, a nice balance between speed, armor repair and resistance. Overall, this build also runs really, really well. Let's take a look at the uh, active stats of this build. The DPS will be the same, 494,000 hit points, 85, 86, 89 and 88% 88 resistances, which is really nice. 10 minutes and 04 seconds is the capacity runtime and the speed with the afterburner is about the same. Overall, uh, the Abaddon is very flexible as you can see. You can build this ship uh, any way you like and in most cases will work, except if you try to shield tank the Abaddon, that's not going to work. Now, Docking I'll request show accepted. you how this ship looks with the thermal circulation implant. Now I will show you how this ship works with the focused and with the pulse crystal. Now before I do that, uh, I just want to show you what units you can use uh, on the implants. Now I usually focus on Nosferatu capacitor battery or armor repair on the Abaddon. That's basically the three main things to keep this ship afloat and to keep this ship alive. So those are the three general units that uh, I would be using on the Abaddon and that's what I'm currently uh, using on all of the three implants that I will show you here. Now the Pulse Crystal uh, is going to give you a 75% damage boost upon activation, you don't have to uh, wait for anything to charge, but it will increase the capacitor usage and the higher capacitor rate is the more damage you will do. So this implant is good to use to be used if you have capacitor batteries. Now the Abaddon has a really solid capacitor by default, so you don't have to worry about running out of capacitor on uh, this ship using this implant. And it will give you a really solid damage boost uh, by basically basically by default. Now I had to swap some uh, general units here because it seems like I didn't have equipped what I wanted to have equipped, but now it's fixed. And of course we have the, the focused crystal, which works a little bit differently, but Okay, 50 minutes and 29 seconds is the capacitor time because I did take the unit for uh, extra Nosferatu performance and the armor repairs repair 2,995 2 armor every 7 seconds. But the resistance will be a little bit lower because uh, you don't have the thermal circulation installed. However, that shouldn't be a big issue. After all, this thing is still tanky by default the thermal implant just makes it even more tankier, which, you know, is really nice uh, for PvP. Okay, now let's take a look at um, at this implant's DPS when activated. 2803.61 DPS, which is, you know, you know, a pretty good 
damage boost. Now at level 45 you can actually sacrifice your own shields for extra capacitor, which will immediately increase uh, the implant's DPS. This is one thing about, uh, about armor tanks. Armor tanks don't need shields. You can sacrifice the shield for extra capacitor, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and this is one of the, of the more fun things uh, about armor tanks. The DPS is about 2.8 thousand, really solid. The capacitor lasts really, really long. And well, on the 45, level 45 implant is going to supply the capacitor for a while. If, if you have a shield logistic ship, they will not like you using this implant because they'll be wondering why am I repairing this ship when they're using that to, to replenish their own capacitor. You might make some logistic pallets very salty if you sacrifice their hard work of repairing your shield for, for capacitor Docking for DPS. Request accepted. Okay, uh, joke aside, let's go for the focus crystal. This implant charges over time and if you miss the target, then you lose the charge and you lose the, uh, you, you lose the DPS. Good for a camp, good for missions, but not really good if you uh, actively flare around to uh, shoot stuff with the Abana. But overall, it's a very powerful implant for missions. And let me show you the maximum possible DPS using this implant. One thing that's very evil, you can charge this implant on a station, you can charge this implant uh, by shooting a friendly dreadnought that's asleep, you can shoot your teammates and charge the implant, it works. I mean, not like I tried, you know, <laughs> not like I, I did that, you know, but the focus crystal uh, works like that and you have to charge it uh, for maximum possible uh, DPS. And I will show you the maximum possible DPS and about the time that it takes to charge this it will be about three or four minutes. Of course, I will uh, quickly cut short um, to the point where the implant is maxed out, but with every new hit, the DPS will slowly uh, go up. If you miss, it resets to zero and you have to start all over again, which is going to make things, you know, a little bit inconvenient. But with level 45, you can immediately charge the implant by 60% and now the DPS is 2.3 thousand with 83, 83, 85 and 84% resistances. And this is still pretty tanky. When you activate the first skill, you get extra armor, but I'm not really sure how many pilots uh, use that. Maximum DPS 4113.76 DPS. Pretty, pretty solid. Uh, should be very nice uh, against unsuspecting Macarials that think that you have a glass DPS build but then you surprise them with 4000 DPS. The Abaddon is one of those ships that I would be very careful if I try to engage them with, with the Macarial. You can build this ship to be a a bait Abaddon with triple scrubbers Docking and then accepted. you just catch unsuspecting Macarial pilots that try to tackle you with barrage implant. With barrage implant, while you can break a lot of ships, the Abaddon is one of those ships that can tank it. So that's one of the ways how to kill my Macarial. If you want to kill my Macarial, well, make a bait Abaddon and well, if I bite, I'm dead. That's how it goes because I can break the tank of a brick tank Abaddon in such a short amount of time. And once the barrage implant goes out, once the Jaros Tabaras go out, well, then you can tank the Makairos, the Makairos DPS without a problem. The beauty of having a super tank ship, a good tank beats good DPS. Always been, and it's not going to be changed. Okay, 15.29 seconds is the capacity runtime. Had to change the units a bit, and now let's let's yeet this ship in some missions just to see if if my theory is correct. You know, I like to when I sp when I develop a build before coming to some conclusions, before you know uh, claiming things, I actually put the ship through rigorous testing first. And before recording this video, uh, I actually did that, so uh, I kind of know what this thing can do. That's why I say that a barrage Macarial that tackles this thing is a dead barrage Macarial. Most Macarials nowadays have no tank, and I know that these ships can be annoying. And if you want to kill a barrage Macarial, fly an Abaddon with full tank, or a rock, or a rattlesnake uh, with a similar build. 
a really good tank does beat a Barrage Macario. And since we know that there is a uh, balance patch coming, I expect the Barrage to be nerfed, so uh, tanking that will be a lot easier. But with this build, I don't have to worry about any Barrage Macario, I don't have to worry about any uh, Glass DPS build, because this thing tanks that. Now you might be wondering, if, if, this, if this ship tanks a Barrage Macario, how did I kill that Brick Tank Balgorn back? back then when I tried the barrage implant for the first time. Now the trick is that the Balgorn, while it can be really tanky, it's not really built to tank. The Abel has extra stats from the bonus and it has extra low slots. Which by default makes this thing even more tankier than the Balgorn and that's why the, the Balgorn has issues with a barrage Macario. However, if you brick tank a Balgorn, you could technically tank a Barrage Macario, but I'm not really sure if you uh, could, if you were able to out repair the damage that you'll be taking when the Barrage goes offline and when the Gyro Stabilizers go offline. That's the that's the problem, and that's something that I have to test uh, to to give an accurate answer if it's possible to tank a Barrage DPS Macario over with over 15,000 DPS with a Balgorn. I know that the tank battleships can, the Hyperion can, this thing can, the Rock can, the Rattlesnake can do that without a problem, but those ships are focused on tank. So we'll have to test out the Brick Tank Balgorn specifically to, to be designed to counter a Barrage Macario. While well, this, this ship and the other tank battleships are designed to be tanking basically anything. And well, I have yeeted this ship right in the middle of uh, the, the mission here and so far no issues. The stats with the reactive are equaling the stats of triple adaptives. And it is very interesting. So against lasers, against uh, missiles that use one damage type, basically missiles with ammo, and against red guns you can use a reactive harder, shield harder or reactive armor harder uh, will work very nice against lasers, drones with uh, single damage types, missiles if the missile is using uh, ammunition for a specific damage type. But against everything else triple adaptives could be the better choice. However in this case in this case, it actually works about the same as uh, Triple Adaptives. I have the same resistance stats, which is a very nice, very nice thing. The armor of this thing holds incredibly well. Of course, uh, I know that these ships can't break the tank, but I'm also very curious to know how fast the ship can repair itself. My friend has an Abaddon that can tank my revelation. We tested out with a tank revelation. It has about, I think, 10,000 DPS. We'll have to test uh, that with a glass DPS revelation build. But this ship is capable to tank uh, It's capable to tank dreadnoughts without a problem. I mean, yeah, if it can tank a dreadnought, it can tank a balance. It's, it's obvious. It can tank a. Uh, Glass Apocalypse Striker if you use a reactive armor harder. Again, the lasers are good against shields, they will melt shields, but at armor, lasers will suffer because they will not do as much damage as a shield. And well, against laser ships, it's perfect to use armor tank ships. You don't have to worry uh, about those Apocalypse Strikers with 20,000 DPS. Against a brick tank like this, it will not do a lot of damage to. Again, that's tested, and I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure if I were engaging a ship like this with my apocalypse striker, I would be hightailing out of the out of that because the Abaddon kills an apocalypse striker if it's full DPS. Because you know, full DPS is good, but if you encounter a good tank, you probably will have to warp out, or they will kill you. So I believe that the Abaddon is going to become one of the one of the greatest Macario killers.
because I know that a lot of my carrier pilots happily jump on anything that they see because they think that the barrage, that the barrage implant on the Macaria will melt through anything. Well, it's true, it will melt your average ship, that's true, it, no, no one is denying that the barrage implant is strong, it will melt most ships, but if you encounter someone who knows what they're doing, if you encounter someone that, you know, likes tank ships, like me for example, that might be a problem, because I like to build my ships to kill ships, it, it might be a problem. And when I design my ships, I also try to uh, design them in a way that it counters my own build. I base I base most of my tests and builds uh, on the on the ships that, that I fly because I'm pre I'm pretty sure that the DPS on some of the ships that I fly is uh, ridiculous, and if it can tank that, then it's can thank most of the things out there. Now we have 16 ships here and well of course they're just barely scratching the surface on this. And this is one of the more serious missions. I thought about running a story mission but uh, I actually... I'm doing something very fun with the story missions. I plan to just run them with destroyers, cruisers, frigates, you know just, just, for, the, just for fun. Uh, that's one thing that I just want to do, just to show, uh, just to prove a point about smaller ships. That's in the works. I have a lot of a lot of videos to to edit and render. So, uh, my thoughts on the Abaddon. It's it became a lot more interesting to fly, honestly. Uh, back with the armor plate build, you basically had that one build on the Abaddon and that's that's about it. The Abaddon that uh, I was flying at the time. I enjoyed it, but at the same time I felt a little bit bored flying it because you only were using that same build and it, anything else that you try with armor repairs would not work because at the time the repairs were not as good as the plates on this ship. So uh, at one point the Abaddon became a little bit boring to fly, so uh, we did change, but nowadays I think the Abaddon got vastly improved. I really like the current Abaddon with the, with the implants and with the active armor tank. I feel like the ship got vastly improved and I really like that. We also did a comparison between a Hyperion with active armor tank versus a Abaddon with a passive brick tank using the plates. And it was actually a draw. Uh, I ran out of capacitor while my friends ran out of armor. So I would guess plates and armor pairs are in a good spot right now. Of course the Hyperion is known to have really good uh, armor pairs wasn't really, I would say, a one-to-one -one comparison that I would say that was 100% accurate, but we both have the same rigs on different ships. One ship for active tanking, one ship was passive armor tanking, and it ended up as a draw, which was a very uh, interesting result. I honestly, uh, what I expected, well, I expected that, I expected that, that the Abaddon would win, actually, because uh, we both had Nosferatus, and we both have about the same energy usage. I know that lasers use a bit more capacitor, so in the end I'm the one who's going to be uh, losing capacitor faster because the Abon will actually use more capacitor and therefore and therefore uh, use even more of my capacitor with the Nosferatus because it's not a blood leadership, ship, so it can't overload with the energy transfer, but it still uh, will transfer faster if the Abaddon has a lower capacitor than the, than the Hyperion, and that was the case. So, it was a very interesting and a very fun test that we did, and that was right, uh, right after the April balance patch. Now, since we have a November balance patch coming in very, very soon, I'm very curious to know what's going to be changed. I expect a lot of implants to be nerfed, but we will see. I also expect, unfortunately, to see a Apocalypse Striker nerf because there is a lot of pilots who don't even play the game complain about the, the Apocalypse Striker, but that's a story for another time. 
the Apocalypse Striker is okay as it is, but uh, it's very difficult to explain that to some uh, some players that just they just don't understand uh, that they're wrong. But unfortunately, ignorance is bliss. So yeah, uh, that's that's about that. We will see what will happen with the Apocalypse. Overall. Uh, if that ship gets ruined, well then F, <laughs> what else to say? Uh, then we have the Abaddon. I don't think that the Abaddon will be nerfed. The amount of Abaddons that I have seen out there uh, actually reduced quite a bit after the plate nerf. And that made me a little bit sad. Now, recently, uh, something that contradicts that... Well, something that contradicts just happened. Uh, Recently I, I started to see a lot more Abaddons, which contradicts what I just said, I know, but uh, it was weird. I used to see a lot more Abaddons. I believe that soon we will uh, see a lot more of the ships flying around. And honestly, I personally can't, cannot wait for that. The Abaddon is such a good ship. I actually will go uh, and fly the Abaddon and the Hyperion, although what kind of build will I use on these ships? Well, I have the... I have the Burning Knight now core on the Hyperion and on the Abaddon, so that core gives you extra armor repair. The Hyperion with the new implants, with the nano core, with all these things included, is going to be a beast. And I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about when I jump in the Hyperion. Uh, my Hyperion, when I when I used to fight, was the tankiest Hyperion in the game. No one had a Hyperion that was as tanky as that. At the time, I was able to tank a bunch of strikers, glass strikers, megatron strikers, apocalypse strikers, all shooting at me in siege, full DPS, and they couldn't break my tank, my armor, uh, off that ship. Unfortunately, I did sell that ship because I didn't really fly it that often, uh, and that was about the time uh, when Dreadnought started to lurk around. That's about the time where I started to fight the Revelation. So. Uh, that's what happened uh, with the with the Hyperion, but I will go back to that good old boat. I have the nano core for it, so I will I will use it. However, the builds on that thing might be changed just a little bit to be a little bit cheaper. But we will see what what will happen. Perhaps I just go with full on four P rigs again, because why not? And I can even add the armor repair unit. So I could get about, let's say, I'm talking off my head here, about 25,000 armor repair every 5 seconds. I believe Warp I might actually active. achieve that armor repair on that ship. That's going to be ridiculous, and I will show you what I'm talking about, because I will record the Hyperion again after the Abaddon, a couple days after this video is out, so uh, I'm very excited to see what kind of monsters uh, I'll be able to create. That's what I do. I like to surpass my own builds and I like to show you guys the best builds possible that I can come up with. The builds that are scary, good, expensive, yes, but in the end those ships that I show you here are bricks. And if you want a ship that's Docking nearly mortal, well, well, you will probably be using a build that uh, I'm going to be showing you here. So, it was a very lovely Abaddon run, I really love this ship, and I'm so sad that I didn't fly it as much as I wanted to, but I'll be back in the Abaddon. Oh, I'll be back in the in the trunks. So with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.